From dragons and roses to butterflies and Japanese kanji, it seems the world loves a good tattoo. In fact, it's estimated that 3 out of 10 people in the United States are inked. In Australia, it's about 1 in 5 people, and around 12% of Europeans are permanently marked with something. This wasn't the case not so long ago, however. If you had a snake on your forearm in the 1970s or 80s, people quickly assumed you were either in the armed forces or an ex-convict. That all changed with the surge of popularity of tattoos in the late 20th century, led by pro athletes and musicians. These days, tattoos are a mainstream form of self-expression where everyone knows someone with some ink. Which begs the question, has this always been a part of human society? It had seemed so. The need to identify oneself with some distinguishable marking goes back thousands of years and can be traced across pretty much every civilization around the world. Reasons for people being tattooed have varied from religious rituals and tribal symbolism to identifying criminals. The earliest known evidence of a tattooed person dates back to roughly 3300 BCE. A mummified man's body was found in the Ostal Alps between Italy and Austria, perfectly preserved in a glacier. Nicknamed Otzi the Iceman, the man had 57 tattoos of crosses and lines on his body. They were presumably made from soot and inscribed into key acupuncture points around his body, although how the tattooing was done remains a mystery. Similarly, ancient examples of tattooing have even been found on Egyptian mummies, dating as far back as 2040 BCE. Interestingly, the majority of these tattoos were on women, mainly featuring around their lower backs and abdomens. While at first it was thought that the tattoos possibly represented lower-class women such as concubines, historians have come to view these markings as a kind of amulet or a good luck charm to aid them through childbirth. Tattooing in ancient Greece is thought to have mainly been used as a punishment or a mark of shame. In the 6th century BCE, Herodotus wrote uh, of his observations of the Persians tattooing slaves and criminals as well as prisoners of war. The Greeks adopted this practice as a way of signifying social rank and ownership. Slaves and prisoners were often tattooed in visible places like their forehead with the delta symbol, which was the first letter in their word for slave. Romans continued this practice, choosing to permanently mark deserters, slaves, and criminals with easily identifiable tattoos. Upper-class Greeks and Romans looked down their noses at anyone with a tattoo. It was considered barbaric, an attitude that has prevailed amongst many groups in society right up until the present day. However, just as stones throw away in ancient Thrace, tattoos were used to signify power, bravery, and honor. Many Thracians were seen in battle with tattooed designs on their arms, legs, and faces, giving them a ferocious appearance to the Greeks and Romans. Tattooing has long been a part of the Polynesian culture. Dating back to over 2,000 years ago, Samoans, Tongans, Cook Islanders, Hawaiians, Tahitians, and Maori all have a deep tradition of tattooing their bodies and faces for a variety of reasons. In fact, the word tattoo derives from the Polynesian word tatau, meaning engraved on one's skin. One reason for the Pacific Islander people being tattooed was to prove themselves as capable of enduring pain. This was crucial to becoming a worthy warrior and a member of their tribe. Tattooing in Polynesian cultures is also a sign of the body and spirit being linked with heaven and earth. The tattoos represent a kind of spiritual projection. Tattoos in the lower body can be seen as a sign of progression through life whereas upper body arm and chest tattoos have a more creative meaning. In countries such as Tonga and Samoa, tattoos showed a person's status and personality. Facial tattoos are also notable in Polynesian societies. The face is regarded as the most sacred part of the body, and to have it tattooed is a great honor, and it represents nobility. The British explorer Captain Cook was absolutely fascinated by the Polynesian tattooing tradition and wrote extensively on the subject. Tattoos were also an honorable art form in Asian societies, such as Japan. Japanese tattoos are known as urusemi, literally meaning insert ink. Evidence of tattooing in Japan dates back as early as 5000 BCE, with clay figures being decorated with a variety of tattoos. Written records also provide detailed descriptions of Japanese adults being tattooed for spiritual and decorative purposes. However, from around 300 CE, tattooing gradually took on a more negative image in Japan. Just as in ancient Rome and in Greece, criminals were often tattooed to distinguish them leading to tattoos being viewed as unsavory and undesirable. And that stigma is still largely prevalent today, with visible displays of tattoos being banned in many public spaces such as saunas and gyms. And yet, in the late 19th century, when Japan opened its doors to the outside world, getting a Japanese tattoo was all the rage for affluent Europeans. Many who visited Japan in the late 1800s 
often returned with extravagant body markings that included lions, tigers, carp, and depictions of nature. The ancient Celts were also renowned for their elaborate battle tattoos, often going into war with blue facial and body tattoos. This distinctive style was created from a, from a native woad plant that, when crushed, would create a bluish dye. Celtic warriors used the blue dye on needle tips to tattoo their torsos and faces for battle. The idea was to intimidate their enemies, and it certainly seems to have been effective. Roman rulers such as Julius Caesar wrote of this eerie and unnerving sight of swarms of wild-eyed, blue-tattooed Celts running into battle. Tattooing was also used by indigenous cultures in North and South America. In the 16th century, British and French explorers were taken with the incredibly descriptive tattoos of some tribespeople on the eastern coasts. Men would be adorned with large animals such as mountain lions, while women were often tattooed with resplendent images of flowers and mountains. The methods of tattooing varied from country to country. Polynesian tattoos were inserted with sharp tools such as bones or shells that were dipped in dark ink. Japanese tattoos were traditionally done with needles attached to bamboo sticks. This was completely revolutionized in 1891 with the invention of the electric tattoo gun. British artist Samuel O'Reilly saw Thomas Edison's automatic typing pen and used the basic principles to patent his tattoo gun. Throughout a large part of the 20th century, tattooing remained an exotic form of expression, with many societies still holding negative connotations towards the art form. It wasn't until the late 60s and the 1970s that musicians began using tattoos as a symbol of rebelliousness and street cred. Images evoking danger were common, such as skulls, crosses, snakes, and, of course, the ubiquitous rose. At first, it was punk and metal bands that often used crudely designed tattoos, but they soon caught on with fans all over the world, and by the 90s, tattoos were becoming mainstream. Pro athletes wanted to be in on the action, and these days, it can be tricky to find a sports player without a tattoo. While tattoos are still considered somewhat taboo, tattoo, taboo, in some cultures such as in Asia and in the Middle East, they're now very much part of someone's self-expression. From a grandmother's ankle to a store clerk's sleeve design, tattoos are here to stay. 